The human race is driven by curiosity. A curiosity that seeks to understand the world around us, apply this knowledge to the technological facets of our life, and ultimately incorporate these technologies to the society around us. And even further, the most profound advances spring from when the same curiosity meets with a significant and notable demand. This is what universities bridge connecting the minds of today with the challenges of tomorrow. And the University of Alberta is a perfect example of this. For starters, it holds some of the top research and academic facilities of both Canada and the world, continually drawing international attention for the past century. And today we'll be looking into one of the most dynamic laboratories of the university, known by the Faculty of Nutrition and Medicine as the Clinical Research Unit or CRU for short. This world-class research facility offers researchers from all over the world a place to throw themselves into an environment where they can best match their curiosity to the demands of our ever biologically changing world. Uh, so my name is Stephanie Ramage. I'm the Human Nutrition Research Coordinator here at the Clinical Research Unit. So I've been working here for two years, almost two years, um, and I am a registered dietitian. And I did a bachelor's degree in nutrition as well as a master's degree in nutrition here at the University of Alberta. The CRU, or the Clinical Research Unit, is located in the Alberta Diabetes Institute and its main purpose is to help um, provide a place where researchers can come and do research. So it's really important because it, it helps um, researchers be able to focus on you know, what specifically are their research questions and, and try to look at the research itself as opposed to trying to figure out where they're going to do it or how they're going to find all of the different resources and tools that they may need. The unit itself has been around since about 2011 and so we've got the clinic space that you can see here. Um, we've got body composition assessment tools, we've got a kitchen and dining room for feeding participants, we've got um, tools for assessing metabolic rate like the whole body calorimeter, um, and we've got lots of sort of clinic rooms and interview rooms where we can you know, have discussions with participants as well. Well, there's always lots of different studies going on here in the unit. Right now, there's another study where they're um, preparing beans and peas. Uh, we have a group of uh, people with diabetes who are following a menu plan. They're looking at specifically a group of Chinese Canadians who have type 2 diabetes and looking at a menu plan for them as well. So. Lots of different types of types of studies that are going on here. So my name is Dr. Sarah Elliott, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher here with the CRU, um, and I've basically been brought on board to be part of the PCAL study. So I was at the University of Queensland, is where I did my undergraduate degree in Australia, and then I worked in Singapore for a year as well before coming to Canada. So it's a definitely a bit of a sea change. So my background is in paediatrics, so mainly in children, and I did focus on obesity in children. Um, I then, when I moved to Singapore, I switched into adults and looking at women's nutrition. So it kind of made sense that the next step in my research was looking again at women, but at the other end of the life cycle, so the pregnancy postpartum period. It just seemed the le next logical step, and. It's in Canada, so I can't complain. So I think mainly the premise behind the study comes from the fact that overweight and obesity is still a problem in middle-aged women, especially around the years of childbirth. So this in particular project, PCAL, is actually part of a big umbrella project called Enrich. Yeah, Enrich is a multifaceted collaboration. Um, we have an international committee as well that we collaborate with, but also different universities like the University of Calgary, 
um, as well as some industry or government such as our Better Health Services. We have, I guess what you'd call adjunct professors working with us. Yeah, so it's a big project. It's a very exciting project and we get to meet researchers from different fields. So there's a lot of communication and expertise being shared, which is really great. Yeah. So there's about five different projects in O-Rich and we're part of Project Objective 2, which is looking at weight and energy balance in the postpartum period. And we're trying to work out what is influencing that weight retention after having a baby. And one of the key things we're looking at is whether or not the energy requirements, so their recommendations for energy intake, are actually accurate. So they were originally developed back in the 70s and 80s from some really early studies. And women's lifestyles have changed over the past three decades. So we're not sure if these energy requirement recommendations are actually accurate for contemporary women. So that's one of the big questions we're trying to answer. And another thing that we're hoping is that our data will kind of show where the key elements that we need to work on in the postpartum period are. Uh, for example, if we find out that diet is the main thing influencing weight retention, perhaps an intervention targeting dietary intake in these women should be implemented. So we have two main testing phases, one at three months postpartum and one at nine months postpartum. At each of these phases we measure their anthropometrics, so their height, their weight, their waist circumference. But yeah, so we can measure their resting energy expenditure, the energy they expend while they're eating food, the energy they expend while they're sleeping, and we also measure energy they expend while they're doing physical activity. So you'll see later on the calorimeter can measure all of that stuff minute by minute. So it's really precise information. I'm a bit of a nerd, so I love the data. <clears throat> I cannot wait to get my hands on some of the data, especially because we have uh, one of, I think there's maybe only one other calorimetry unit in Canada. Like we have some really, really cool data to look at. Um, so that to me is going to be rewarding, like getting that data and answering some of these key questions that'll help other researchers. That's really what I find exciting. Um, but for me, like I said, it's, it's the data. Getting some data that we know that no one else in the world is collecting right now. We're the only one. I think the thing that I love about research the most is just that um, you have the opportunity to change practice or, or influence how health professionals practice. So when someone is working in the healthcare field, we're always looking at guidelines and, and following those guidelines. Um, but when you look at, when you work in research, you have the opportunity to sort of think about those guidelines and say, well, does that really make sense? Maybe there's something different that we could be doing. Um, and that's where the research comes in to sort of explore some of those, some of those ideas and opportunities. The way that the BOD pod works um, is that it measures uh, body composition. So it provides an estimate of someone's fat mass and fat-free mass. Um, so we measure a person's height and their weight. And then with the BOD pod, we measure their body's volume. And so we know exactly how much air is contained within the pod. Um, and then when someone sits inside of it, we find out how much air their body displaces from the pod. And so from that, we're able to figure out what their volume is. Uh, and then we have equations that take the height, the weight, and the volume to estimate um, someone's fat mass and fat-free mass. So with the DEXA, there's uh, two very low doses of x-ray that are um, directed out of the machine. And depending on the way that the x-rays attenuate or change direction when they're passing through um, an individual's body. Um, and so the way that the DEXA is a little bit different than the BOD pod is that the DEXA actually um, systematically breaks down a person's body into different pixels and identifies those pixels as muscle, um, fat, or bone. And then from there, we're able to get a full picture of the entire body. Okay, so this is a uh, calorimetry unit where uh, people spend 24 hours inside the uh, metabolic chamber. Uh, basically, we are taking a measurement of the uh, CO2 level and the oxygen level uh, every minute. So we have a uh, air pump right here. It's off, but usually it's pumping 
60 liters per, uh, per minute. One liter per minute of air is uh, being sampled and sent to the gas cooler right here. And then the air is sent to, uh, using those two membrane pumps, the air is sent to the uh, CO2 analyzer and the oxygen analyzer. And everything is being translated by the uh, data acquisition box and sent to the computer where we get the uh, data. So, so then we can really look at your metabolism during uh, all kinds of activities, during sleeping, during resting, exercising. We have a treadmill inside, uh, before a meal, after a meal, um, during sedentary activity. That's what they do most of the time, because it's not a big, uh, it's like a small hotel room. What we get from this, uh, from this lab, it's uh, the amount of calorie being used and what kind of calorie. During exercise, the RQ value will increase because the uh, body will look for some uh, fast uh, energy to, uh, to burn. And during uh, resting, it will be a mix of both. We can study uh, the metabolism of anyone into a free uh, environment. Nothing is attached to them and uh, it's, it's quite comfortable. Uh, we only have two in Canada and probably a dozen or 10 or 12 in the US and maybe six more in Europe and one in Australia, I think. So for students that are interested in getting involved with research, there's always, you know, summer job opportunities, our website as well, where our contact information is there. So if, if people wanted to, to contact someone directly and we know if there's people looking for, for students or volunteers and we can help direct them in that area. Um, I'd suggest to have a look. The University of Alberta has some great resources and some great programs. Um, Wisest, which you're very familiar with, is one of them, um, and so is the Hires. So if you go onto their website and have a look at what some of the requirements are to get a summer ship with us, um, and try and find a lab that you think you'll be interested in, and just give it a go at applying. And if you can't find any scholarships, perhaps just volunteer to work with a lab, and then you'll really get to find out whether you enjoy the lab work. Um, not all lab work is glamorous. <laughs> some of it is very long hours, a lot of wet lab work, but then again, some of it's really patient orientated, so you get a lot of human interaction. So, depends what you're looking for, but I would advise them to do their own research in terms of what they're interested in, and then maybe approach a principal investigator and, and just see if they can volunteer to see what working in a lab is like. Over 100 years ago, the University of Alberta initiated its promise of uplifting the whole people. What better way to express this than to celebrate the interdisciplinary approach of research being taken in the CRU? We are each driven and inspired by different aspects of the world around us, and we each find purpose in different places in life. But regardless of our differences, we should never doubt the power our curiosity carries, the power to surely uplift the whole people.